Good to go. Okay, so uh, it's Wednesday, uh, July 17th, 2024, at 6.30 p.m., um, having quorum. I'll uh, go to item one and call the uh, Bridgewater Planning Board to order. Um, this meeting is being held remotely in accordance with the provisions of the open meeting law, pursuant to the governor's approval of a supplemental budget bill. Temporary provisions pertaining to the open meeting law have been extended to March 31st, 2025. Specifically, the, the, the further extension allows public bodies to continue to hold meetings remotely without a quorum of the public body physically present at a meeting location and to provide adequate and alternative access to remote meetings. The language, the language of this extension does not make any substantive changes to the open meeting law other than extending the expiration date of the temporary provisions regarding remote meetings from March 31st, 2023 to March 31st, 2025. Members of the public are encouraged to participate remotely and shall address the questions through the chair of the board, or in this case, we have a host, Mr. O'Brien, this evening. Um, the following members of the board, Bridgewater Planning Board, are participating remotely this evening. I'm Patrick Fisco, the chair. Mr. Michael McDonald, the vice chair. Mr. Stephen Geller and Mr. Ted Haley. Um, during the meeting, all votes will be roll calls. And the Bridgewater, the following Bridgewater Town staff with us this evening as well, Mr. Robert Ruley, the Community Economic Development Director, Mr. Shane O'Brien, the Town Planner, uh, Ms. Tristy Jane, the Assistant Town Planner, Mr. Greg Tanzi, the Town Engineer, and Mr. Stephen Solari, the Building Commissioner. <clears throat> At this time, everyone's mics are muted. The board's mics will be unmuted through the whole meeting. And as items appear on the agenda, the project's representative's mics will be unmuted. If the project is a public hearing, I'll ask for public comment. We ask that you use the chat feature and ask your question by listing your name, your address, and your question. The chair or the host will recognize questions in order. You can also use the raise my hand feature in the participant menu, and you'll be unmuted when the chair or the host recognizes you. Again, please state your name and address before asking a question. If you're on the phone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. Now, first, uh, under item two, we have continued public hearings. We have 456 Bedford Street. This is map 62, lots 34 and 8. This is a proposed expansion of a parking count pursuant to 10.6. Site plan approval is continued from June 5th, 2024. At this point, I'll turn it over to the applicant if they have uh, a presentation to make and then board uh, questions. Is anybody here from the applicant's team? Yeah, ask. Uh... Sorry, Astrid's uh, just entered the room, but Israel is here on behalf of 456. Um, so I will. Yes. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, I'm Israel Ismail. I'm here to represent Elite Motors at 456 Bedford Street. Yeah. Um, our request is um, extend the parking space, and uh, we have already provided all the requested uh, documents. Um, only what left is the cleaning back there, uh, the other side of the building where my landlord is using it. Um, there was a, some... Um, uh, motorcycle parts was over there, so it's been cleaned. Um, at this point, we don't have anything else to do other than that. So that's why I'm here to make okay. it clear for so. All right, thank you. Yeah. So, sir, was was the pile? I I I see the pit the photos that that accompanied the um. The memo. Um, were the piles out behind the building cleaned as well? I mean, I know those weren't in the purview of the Conservation Commission, but just from a site safety standpoint and stuff, there were piles behind the building. Are those gone or are they still there? Are you asking me? Yes, sir. Yes, it's been cleaned and uh, there was a paperwork. My, I'm actually out of country, so they have sent it to me and they said they. They've been clear with the town. Everything's all set back there. Okay. But just from a circulation standpoint, the piles that were behind the building, outside of the, the resource they're area. Re removed. They're removed as well? Correct. Mr. Chair, just to be clear, the only documentation he got from 
conservation was with respect to that area between the building and the stream. We didn't issue anything regarding the rear of the building. Um, just, I, I pointed out to uh, just a question on the plan. It looks like the first page has a typo on it and it should be 56 sales spots. Is that correct? Right. And, not, and not 61. Is that correct? Well, we, we was going to get 61. Then, um, you guys said, it, um, that's supposed to be, there's a parking space for the, uh, customer. And uh, so I I don't know last time how many parking space you guys agreed to give it to me. Yeah, Mr. Chair, just counting it the last time, I think that was just a uh, an error from a old table. Um, but counting it, um, both plans should consistently say 56, and the site plan does show 56 spaces. Um, so it's just uh, it could be a quick correction um, through the uh, endorsement process. So just just for um, for striping purposes, what is going to be striped? And and I mean, are all the spaces going to be painted? Oh, Israel, I think. Yes. Are all are all the spaces proposed to be painted prior to the cars being located there? Correct. So, so you plan just so I'm clear. You plan. Asking, you plan on pack, You you plan on striping all the spots, not just the uh, handy. Like, uh, painted, uh, separate the parking spots. Is that what you're asking? Correct. Are you proposing just to paint the customer parking spots and the handicapped, or all the spots? No, not gonna be painted. All the spots. All the spots not gonna be painted. So, so Shane, I, just in terms of painting and the conditions, what are your thoughts? Uh, I, right. Haven't been uh, requested to be painted though. Well, just from from Mr. Solari or Mr. Uh, O'Brien's, just so we can properly condition it. What what does the town require to be painted? Is it just the handicap, the handicap lane, the customer spots, or is it all the spots? Well. The intent of this whole process is for the spots to be, I guess, I guess in terms of employee parking spaces, this this the spots that are striped or shown on the plan, I guess, should technically be painted. Right. Steve, go ahead. <clears throat> this location is mostly gravel there is no a lot of these cars right now are not parked on asphalt and the extension of this parking lot is i i still think gravel um i mean i don't know what the requirements are the town doesn't have requirements on uh parking in spaces i mean a lot of towns do you got to show exactly parking but this is a previous gravel uh there's asphalt up to a certain point, and then beyond that, it's been a gravel parking lot. And the extension that they've added has continued to be part of the gravel area. But but I guess my question is, is it appears that all the customer spots and the handicap spots are on pavement. Is that correct? That has to be on pavement. Uh, the handicap, no matter what, has to be on pavement uh, because they also have to have they have to the, the handicap lane, you know, next to the vans you know the, the one van spot they have to have so i guess from a town standpoint what are we looking so we can condition it properly what are we looking to have painted and lined uh i would definitely say no matter what you need the handicap spot and you need the um you need the um basically the customer spots So essentially, we would want the paved spots. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, paved spots marked, but the gravel spots would be fine unmarked. 
I'm agreeing right. with Mike. I mean, I mean, sorry, Mike. Yeah, my, because you'd be better off to have anything that's pavement mocked out so that at least the initial coming in and going up, you align to this Cosnot everywhere. And then the gravel area, which is up behind, um, which, like I said, this would be a different story if this was, was a total brand new parking lot, because then we'd probably be looking at uh, paving and lines, but we're really extending an existing gravel parking lot. It's kind of a little bit of a different situation than a new use or a new uh, something new coming into the town. Right, but just just so I'm clear, all the customer spots and all the handicap spots, as shown, are on on pavement or are going to be on pavement. Correct. I I got to be. I, I'm sorry, Pat. I don't have the plan in front of me. Shane or Israel. I would say yes, um, could be over there. Center. The the plan talks about existing conditions of whatever's there. Um, it says existing pavement or in existing surface, but I would say that the customer parking spaces. I would say anything left of the garage. I think is paved. Yeah, and I think that's what we would be looking to have paved. So that would be the handicap space, as well as the hatch marks, as well as the customer parking, as well as the hatch marks adjacent to it in front of the garage door. So I think that's what the expectations would be. Um, and I believe that area is paved. Mr. Uh, Mr. Driscoll, could we uh, also not just condition it so that uh, those spots had to be uh, paved and lined? Oh, I think we have to. I think we have to condition it that those those spot, you know, before he increases, yeah. that, he has to comply. All right. So can can we condition it that you know all customer parking, handicap parking, and any parking that falls on existing asphalt be striped? I think that's appropriate. Just like that. Yeah. You know, I'm just just looking at this right now. So the customer parking that goes right up to the building. This is usually something Mr. Geller picks up. Do we need, is there any type of metering or anything there? Do we need car stops or bollards there? That one spot in the front? Where customer, I, we need customer parking number two? Correct. Is that the edge? That that looks like the, that's the edge. Of the, the, the car pulls right up to the building, correct? Correct. Is there anything proposed there for a car stop, a bollards or anything? Usually we have something put there. It is not striped over there, but um, that was the plan to park the car. This this is not something um, I knew it before. If 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 it's been requested before, I would have striped it that 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 spot. Um, so, uh, just sorry, not to interrupt, but if you. Look at the site plan based on uh, the Google Maps. Mm -hmm. There's an existing parking space already there with hatch marks adjacent to the garage. Uh, so it would be, garage be, should be, should yeah, be right. I think I think we want you know I think I think if they're proposing handicapped spots there, we want those painted and, and to meet the requirements. No, I understand from an ADA accessible standpoint. I'm just saying that the parking space that is shown as customer parking to the non-ADA accessible currently exists. Right. Okay. All right. All right. But I think just look, I, I think all the all the customer parking and the hand, customer parking, including the handicapped, would have to be properly painted and paved if it's not paved. But we're assuming it's paved, correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. Pat, I think I would condition it the way I the way I I spoke that all customer parking, handicap parking, and any parking located on existing asphalt needs to be striped. Okay, so what if they're showing parking that's not on? What if they're showing par existing parking and gravel? It needs to be paved. No, 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 no. Any oh, any any proposed parking layout that falls on asphalt needs to be striped. Right, but I believe Mr. Solari said we have to have the pack, the, the customer and the handicap lined, correct? Right, but as what was just said is that 
what they're saying is that even though those have to be lined, anything that's on pavement has to have lines so that park, uh, cars can't park be parked haphazardly. You right. Know, there's, so, there's... So, right. So for instance, spot 56, 55, and probably half of 54 is located on existing parking, is on existing pavement. You know, any striping past lot 56 should not be striped. Where probably today, currently, there are cars parked. Well, I would I would say that based on the aerial and being to the site, everything shown to us, I believe, is on existing pavement. Correct. I think there's no parking located on wherever is gravel, so everything here is ex the existing pavement that exists at the site. And when you say everything, you mean employee and customer and handicapped? Yes. But not in the car, and the, the, the for sale cars are all on gravel? I would say right now at this very time, they're probably not, but I think the intent is that we would get all these spaces as designed to be located on the pavement. But how, wait a minute, I'm confused. All the spaces, are not the retail spaces, though. No, you understand. They're not going to pave the the the, the fifty six spots. I right? understand that, but they're locating all their parking to be located on existing pavement, because right now the cars are everywhere. So part of this is one from a licensing perspective and a zoning enforcement perspective is to place everything on pavement and have spaces located so we have an exact number and exact location. So from one, a safety issue, um, as well as an organizational issue um, for us to make sure that there will always be 56 spaces for sale. All right. So basically, we're saying the same thing. Employee parking. Um, and, all right. Gentlemen, um, that parking lot is not in good condition as uh, the, the pavement is not perfectly excellent condition. It's patched, all kind of things, you know. Uh, I don't know how to explain to you guys. The, also, this parking lot used to be unlimited uh, parking space uh, after uh, they put a 60, then a 50 parking lot. And um, I've been fighting to extend this limit, and then only six cars we increase if it's possible. And all this time, I spend over ten thousand dollars for to for this plot plans, all kind of documentation, everything to prepare and put on a table and still something coming up uh, which is not being requested before and uh, i'm also kind of frustrated i don't know if, well I, I think i think that you, you, I you don't should know if you guys understand me or not but well you show you show you show on a plan with spots we just you know typically it's, i just want to make sure that what's what it has to be painted yeah, that 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 lot uh can take a lot of cars and everybody else knows this that parking lot can take a lot of cars and um, to make it everything exactly perfect this is not my uh, private property to make it everything uh, put that kind of investment to make everything perfect and um, it's just where I am kind of I want to give up and let it be like that. I don't know. So, 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 Mr. Slari, what what needs to be painted for you to be satisfied? Well, I'm in, in agreement with the uh, the board members that the what needs to be because again, it's an existing parking lot, it's an existing business, it's been a car dealership, um, and like I said, we're going here to before we can go in front of the council for more spots, it has to be approved by the planning board and the, the building inspector and then go to licensing. So in my opinion, at least the 
you, the handicap spot has to be painted uh, and the customer spots. But I am in agreement with the board that it, to me, whatever you have for pavement should be lined because at least you got on the pavement end, you've got everything in order. So the cars cannot be parked sideways, angular, because as you know, and again, nothing against car dealers. I that, that my the biggest problem on Bedford Street is that I have a lot of them that go way above the the amount they're allowed. I mean, I'm not talking I one or two. I'm talking agree. twenty or thirty. So if if you at least have the paved area, uh, I mean the paved area lined, we have a distinction, and then you have the other spots will be, of course, on the gravel surface where they exist now. So to me, Mr. Solari, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I would like to add some. Um, uh, I I totally agree with you. It should be everything nice and organized. And uh, I want to tell you that that I run my business maximum incorrect way. I park my cars nice and in order. I am not uh, making junkyard since I came to this place. No, Israel, uh, I'm not, and, I'm, uh, and I'm not using you as the as the press because that's a, we have other please. dealerships, and that's what I'm saying. As time's yeah. going on. We're trying to make sure that we at least keep the fronts cleaned up so we know exactly. No, no, I'm not using you as – I've not had any – I have had no issues. Definitely, but I want to had. bring this to your uh, attention. This, so far, um, you, you have an idea before I came to that place, before two years ago. Uh, that place was like a junkyard. And I've been cleaning, organizing that place every single time, every single day, myself in person. I do a lot of work over there. I made that place – uh, way better than before. I'm, and I'm not saying you're doing it. That's why we're here. We're just here to finalize this plan. Right. So that I, we I just can, we can move on. Right. There's, there's things that we have to re require, like the handicap spot be painted. And, you know, I, so, all right. I, I think Mr. Geller made a great suggestion early on. So, um, anything else that the board can think of for questions? For uh, well, I guess just to uh, get to the heart of the issue, uh, Mr. Is uh is Mayeli, and I apologize if I pronounce that wrong. Uh, do you have any issue with uh, striping the uh, paved spots? No, no, not at all. Um, just uh, I would like to complete this meeting, and then um, I'm out of country uh, right now. Came to get married, and I'll be back by twenty fifth, twenty fifth of this month. And as soon as I arrive there, uh, I'll I'll hire some company to come to stripe as it is shows in the plot plan, uh, the handicap spots and um, uh, the parking spots for the customers where to park, okay? I can have them stripe that and I can even, uh, uh, maybe I'm not gonna uh, make expensive job just like uh, how you see in the, in the road because that's probably a super expensive job to do that stripe whole parking lot like that. But um, I'm gonna hire a company to do a nice job and that kind of job it's gonna last. And that's what I can do. I can promise that I'm gonna take care of that. And um, you, you guys shouldn't have a doubt about uh, me keeping my parking lot nice and organized. I'm very uh, disciplined person and keeping my business nice and beautiful and uh, giving good service that's my that's in my character so uh, shouldn't uh, not gonna be issue if if that's what's your concern strap in the parking lot um, putting the cars nice and in order organize and parking spot uh, you want to market for uh, as as you guys said um for handicap and customer parking that will be my promise. I'll take care of that as soon as I get there. And you guys can come to confirm it. No problem. Okay. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, and congratulations, by the way. But, um, I just want to finish this already. It's been a while we, we've been dealing over this. So, so Mr. Gala, just back to what you said, because I, I think you said it pretty well. Yeah. We, we want to have everything. We Obviously, we want the, the customer parking, the handicap parking, in all spots that are on pavement, striped, per the plan, correct? Correct. Okay. All right. That's my. Anything I, else? Anything else we we and, have? And, and, and the plan and the and the and the parking count should be corrected on one of the plans. 
on sheet one, correct. Okay. All right. Any any other questions for the applicant? From the board? All right, this is Bill, a public hearing. So are there any members of the public here that would like to speak in favor or opposition or ask questions about this project? That. And there is no one with their virtual hand raised. So I do not have any of the members of the public with their hands raised, Mr. Chair. Okay. Do we have um, any staff comments at this point? No, I provided some uh, draft conditions uh, for possible approval. I'm happy to add uh, the two conditions that you guys have discussed. But other than that, um, I think we are satisfied with the site plan itself and look forward to a motion to approve with conditions. Yeah, I just, you know, I just think if somebody presents a site plan to us showing parking spots and paintings, it should be painted part of the plan. But if we just want to keep it to the asphalt, I mean, that's up to the board. So right. I apologize, Mr. O'Brien. What's the second condition? Uh, uh, the changing from um, it was a Scrivener's error. Oh, oh, um, yes, in the okay. first plan that showed us uh, it was at 67, uh, 50, 61 uh, sale parking spaces when there only be uh, 56 authorized. Thank you. All right. Anything else from the board? Anything else from the public? Uh, if there's nothing else, do we have a motion to close the public hearing? So, so moved. moved. Second. Uh, by Mr. Geller, second by Mr. McDonald. Ms. Rojas is still not with us, correct? No, she's here. She's here. She, she's here. Okay. How about Ms. Pagan? No? Yep, Ms. Pagan's here. We have a full board. All right, good. All right, so we have a motion to close the public hearing with a second. I'll take the roll. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Geller? Yes. Ms. Oh, Rojas? Hey, Paul, I'm sorry, Pat. No, we didn't have a motion or a second. Yeah, yeah we did. We did. Oh, so we I apologize. Motion by Mr. Geller, second by Mr. McDonald. Sorry, I didn't catch that. Apologies. All right, back to here. So I already went through um, Mr. McDonald, you were a yes. Mr. Geller, you were a yes. Ms. Roja? Yes. Mr. Haley? Yes. I'm a yes. Okay, so um, just to discuss the, the plan, do we have um, Mr. O'Brien offered us a draft condition? I just noticed in the draft condition, it didn't talk anything about striping. I think Mr. Geller gave us a good suggestion. Do we want to talk about that striping? Uh, I'm okay with the uh, proposed condition to stripe the paved area. Uh, I think the gravel is fine as it is. Um, so all customer, all handicapped, and everything on pavement, whether it's a for sale spot, employee spot, or for sale spot, correct? Correct. Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay. And then the other condition would be to the the max sale vehicle count would be fifty six, correct? Correct. Okay. So that would be added as condition eighteen and condition nineteen, uh, per the draft conditions if added of course you know prior to do we have to that you know the, the striping has to be done prior to any addition of vehicles or applying for any license increase is that we should we should put that language in there so mr slurry has some yeah we don't have a, a co or a, a building permit per se to tie it up this so um yeah I, we could tie it to um licensing <laughs> Okay. So, but Mr. Solari and I can keep watch as well. Okay. All right. Do we have any more discussion on this? Does somebody want to make a motion either to approve or to deny? I'll make a motion to approve with the standard conditions Mr. O'Brien has laid out uh, with the addition of the two conditions, uh, that being regarding the striping and the uh, scrivener service corrections. Thanks. So a motion by Mr. McDonald. We have a second. I'll second. Mr. Geller. Any discussion? I'll take the roll. 
Um, Mr. Haley? Yes. Ms. Rojas? Yes. Mr. Geller? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Israel. Good luck. I appreciate that. Um, but about uh, stripe in the parking lot, uh, it is my word, and then I'm the man of my word. I'll keep, I'll keep my word. I'll take care of it as soon as I get there. All right, Mister. I'll uh, once the decision's finalized, we'll have it at the clerk's office, and um, we'll forward it your way. So we'll keep you in the po keep you in the loop. Thank you, gentlemen. Take care. You guys have a great night. Thank you. You too. Thank. You. Okay, so um, under item two, the second continued public hearing we have this evening is zero Plymouth Street, map 24, lot 52. This is a site plan review under section 10.6 for a new office, warehouse building with parking, drainage and utilities. This is continued from our June 26th meeting. Uh, I believe Mr. Kosker as well, is that correct? Yes, sir. Well, I'll turn it over to you. For the record, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, my name is Michael Koska. I'm an engineer uh, operating from 98 Broad Street, Bridgewater, Mass. Uh, the last time that we were uh, initially before you, uh, the plan got reviewed by the town planner, Mr. O'Brien, and uh, subsequently by Mr. Tansy, uh, town engineer. We have received comments back from our second review um, there is nothing there that we uh, feel is um, detrimental to what we're trying to do. And all of the conditions or the additions that we can make as far as Ms. Tansy's uh, second review um, will be put on the plan and could be made as conditions of approval if that is what uh, you and the board wish to do. Um, the, in, in, and that's sheets one through six. The drainage, uh, I went to the planning board office today and forwarded um, uh, through Shane uh, to Greg uh, uh, that the checklist was not stamped. Uh, I made a copy of that page and sent it along and there is uh, understand the tenant um, a illicit discharge certification uh, that was uh, sent over. Um, so any comments from sheet one through sheet six, which are the plans, we would be happy to add all of those uh, comments that uh, uh, Greg had to make it 100% uh, uh, compliant as far as um, uh, he is concerned. and. Shane, I don't know if he has anything um, uh, left from his review, but I thought that we satisfied it and uh, uh, it would be probably best uh, to see what his status might be at this point. Uh, but I, I'm hoping that we have, a, have it in order. Remember, Mr. Chairman, uh, this plan went uh, through the board as a uh, contract is building once and then it was a, a, a restaurant uh, second time, we're back to the contract this year for the third time around. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. I just, I had two follow up questions. The same question as I asked when we had the initial meeting. And maybe Grit, Mr. Tansy can answer this. So the Cape Cod berm show, shown going out to uh, Mill Street. Is that, is Mill Street curving? Is it is there no curving on Mill Street? Is it granite? Because typically, if there's granite, we have granite on the radius. What what is on Mill Street, and should that be granite at the radius coming in, like we typically require? I think that uh, what they have on the uh, edges there is just uh, there's no Cape Cod berm or granite curving there at, at this time. Mr. Tansy, do you have an opinion on that? I mean, it's if it's fine, it's fine. I just want to make sure. Typically, yeah. typically, we have the granite transition into a Cape Cod berm. Yeah, I don't recall seeing any type of um, granite or uh, bituminous uh, berm out there. Um, so if that be the case, the way they presented the plan, I'm okay with it. If you wanted to just cover your 
you know, tracks, you could condition it such that if there is such a, you know, granite curbing out there, that the return curves be granite to match the existing or something of that nature. Um, yeah. There's no granite. I, I, think, I didn't go with this. Out. There's nothing there. There's yeah. no granite. No. There's no granite. Okay. All right. And then, Mr. Um, Costco, the only other thing we, I, I just went through the plans. I, it's, we talked about this plan the same night. We had 815 Bedford Street on, and we talked about a, um, a district buffer strip, and we determined that there's plenty of vegetation behind the building. There's the um, easement behind the building, and there's a, a, a pond between this and the residential. So we, we determined that that we didn't need a diff district buffer strip, but the street buffer strip, the board indicated, and I had mentioned that we'd, we'd like to see that that done. And that's that was, um, in our, in our rules and in our zoning now, it talks about um, basically the three frontage, there should be a trees every 30 feet, evergreen and shade trees mixed at a certain caliper. Okay, we have uh, something I can, because I see there's only four, five plant, five trees on the plan now. Uh, let's see. Four maple and a tree. So it just does in, in, the, in the business gateway, East Gateway, Elm Street overlay, South Business, Industrial A, Industrial B, the SPGA or planning board may require a landscape buffer strip of at least 20 feet wide, continuous for approved driveways to be established adjacent to public ways, visually separating parking and other uses from the road. The buffer strip shall be planted with grass, medium height shrubs, evergreens and shade trees, having a minimum four inch caliper um, every 30 feet. So if that's something that could be added to the plan, I mean, we don't have to hold it up tonight, I don't think, but just if that could be added. Okay, because um, a 20 foot buffer strip, buffer strip, I would suppose that if you look where the snow storage area is on sheet number two of six, um, we can put, uh, you know, uh, uh, 20 feet there, but then you're into the uh, well, I think I, area. I mean, I mean look, look at it. Plum, Plumish Street is is the main Plum, I guess, I guess just me looking at the plan. We, I don't want you to change the parking layout or anything myself, but just along Plumish Street and, and you have plenty of grass, you have plenty of grass area between the parking lot and Plumish Street, and then yeah. we, we can along Mill Street, I guess. Okay. Um, Mr. Dyer is here with me and he doesn't have any issue with that. So yes, that could be a condition of approval. And uh, Pat, are you talking are you talking and, about possible will, planting uh, from over add the trees uh, as necessary? What's what's that, Mr. Brian? Are you talking about plantings along Plymouth Street in this area? Plymouth Street and Mill Street in the grass areas, yeah. No, I know. I just I, I'm just in terms of visualizing it. It's just, we have trees you, along Mill Street, but you were looking for some more prominent shade trees on Plum. um, around Plymouth Street. Okay. It's just it's out, out, outside the utility area, of course, because I know that um, based yeah. on past plans that um, National Grid is very uh, uh, determined to make sure that there's no trees in their uh, easement area. All right. Those are my comments. So I'll, I'll turn it. I'll turn it over to the board for other questions. Here in a little bit. Yeah. We'll yeah. Uh, just did anybody just for uh, Mr. Tanzi? Uh, any general comments on the plan? Um, I know you've made some in writing, but uh... yeah, they they seem to have cleaned up all of my um, concerns. Um, I don't think there's anything anything uh, substantive or material um, that can't be conditioned. Okay, excellent, thank you. Is, is there anything you'd like to see conditioned? Uh, you kind of left a little bit of a leading comment at the last bit there. Well, it's really up to the, the board. Um, I would just want to Probably a, a practical condition would be to, um, you know, make sure that the utility easement is um, 
un, unobstructed, um, you know, at grade or even above grade. Um, if you're getting into some some tree plantings, um, you, you'd hate to see a, a tree get limbed uh, just because it was interfering with some type of a overhead utility. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. You know, and, and then I read your I read your letter a couple of days ago. I can't find it right now, but. You had mentioned we should condition it upon the dark sky. Is that what you said? Is that correct? Uh, that's that's correct. I think um, what they are proposing will meet the dark sky requirements, but it never, um, you know, hurts to condition it in case somebody has a complaint, um, you know, about glare or something. At least the the planning board would have the uh, the ability to go back and have them put a shield on it or um, make the luminaire a different um, incandescence or whatever needs to be done. Um, I'm not overly concerned about it because it doesn't seem like it needs a whole lot of light lighting. Um, it's a relatively small parking lot, but then again, it is um, at a corner that is, you know, fairly heavily traveled. So um, to talk with uh, Mr. Tansy's comments as well, too. The, the applicant did provide us lighting specs, and they're all box lights off the building. Um, so any light pollution you would really get is if someone was driving toward the building. But it, it, in terms of adjacent properties, you're really not going to get a lot of uh, light pollution from those box lights. It's more for the safety okay. of the uh, workers or employees of those uh, locations. Do the box lights comply with Doc Sky? Yeah, I, w I assume so. Looking at the specs, um, they're downward facing. They're not. All right, all right, all right. They're so down, not, not everywhere. Okay, good. So the the other thing I see on Mr. Tansy's uh, thing is the comment remains about the uh, illicit discharge statement. Uh, yeah, he had this afternoon. He had submitted that, um, and I don't have a problem with that statement. Okay. It is more of a formality. Um, a lot of times they'll uh, resubmit that after construction to ensure that there aren't any illicit discharges being tied into the drainage system. Okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure that everything's caught. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any um, any other board questions, comments? How about staff? Uh, I mean, uh, it's the public hearing, so I'll open it up to the public at this point. Anybody from the public? Uh, let me check for some virtual hands. Someday, maybe real life hands. Uh, I don't see anyone in the chat. Um, so I do not see any, Mr. Chair. Okay, so if we're... Um, Comfortable and there's no more questions. Is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. And Mr. Geller, is there a second? Second. All right, Mr. Haley. Okay, I'll take the roll. Uh, Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Geller? Yes. Ms. Rojas? Yes. Mr. Haley? Yes. Um, yes. Okay. So just discussing um, things that I wrote down, I, I don't think it makes sense if, I mean, I trust Mr. Dyer, Mr. Koska, if they say there's nothing there, I don't think we need to add any granite uh, curb. As If there was granite there, I just want to make sure we were consistent. So um, is everybody okay with that? No problems here. Um. I, you know, I, I would like them to add the plantings to comply with um, Section 6.4 of our, of our performance um, of our landscape standards. But, um, you know, there's a lot of frontage on, on, um, on Mill Street and Plummer Street. If it interferes with a, an easement or it interferes with a proposed parking lot layout, I don't want that to change, but just work the trees around 
um, the existing grass area, you know, at, at the intervals proposed in the in that ordinance. Um, did anybody else have anything else? Uh, the um, we the, the downward lighting is that correct? The uh, night sky. Yeah, agreed. And Mr. Gelly, you asked Mr. Tansy about a drainage issue, and that Mr. Tansy said was re resolved today. Is that correct? Yeah. And Pat, to the dark skies, uh, I did have that as a condition of the decision um, as number 18. That site shall be uh, dark sky compliant. Okay, so the, what we're really adding is the planting schedule from 6.4 and that's it, right? So I got uh, one, one other question. Is, is, is the applicant... I know they said yes, but I just want to make sure that they're okay with recommended binder course thickness and everything else under the construction details, since it is going to be heavy trucks going in there. Yes, we're all set with that. You're asking me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. You're the owner. Yeah. Yeah, um, as well as um, I did. I, I did. His comments. That's why. Yeah, I did provide a comment. I did provide a condition as well, too, um, prior to endorsement of the plans that um, the applicant provide the necessitated information per the uh, July 17th um, town engineer review for um, compliance, too. So uh, making sure that prior to uh, the chair signing the plans and prior to a building permit that the plans are compliant to Mr. Tansy's comments. Okay. Okay. All right, so do we have a motion on the project? So uh, I, I will make the motion to approve, but uh, Mr. O'Brien, do we need any special wording for the uh, the plantings or our minutes? I, I, I would I enough? would leave it up to uh, uh, let's I, um. I, you want to do it on the motion, Pat? Yeah, I, I would. I would just I would just say that you know we make a motion to approve that that um, six point four two lays out the requirements for the buffer strip, and it talks about you know. Um, certain caliper trees be implanted at intervals of every 30 feet. Now, obviously, if there's a an easement or something else that one of them has to get removed, the two of them have to be removed, that's, that's understood, and those should just be noted on the plan prior to endorsement. Will do, and I'll let you review those plans, Mr. Chair. Right, and I think, Mr. O'Brien, we're trying to get away from um, the pear tree in town, is that correct? Yes, we're uh, getting we we've eliminated them as the uh, shade tree possibility from street trees. Um, so not to say that we really have any strong purview, but yeah, I wouldn't care for flowering yeah, pear here. So right. um, you know, uh, ma the maples that they mentioned are fine. Maple, so maybe just maple pine, just more native stuff. That's that's what we're looking for, right? Yeah, I would I would say more shade trees than evergreens. Okay. okay. In that case, so moved. And that's 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 outlined in six point four point two of the zone. So okay. Oh, Mr. McDonald, you made the motion, so you can't second two. No, no, he 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 added the motion. He he said so. Oh, moved. okay. I apologize. You're right. So, so so Mr. McDonald made a motion with the condition. Do we have a second? Second. Jane didn't say. Mr. Gallo. Um, okay. So I'll take the roll. We have a motion to approve with the condition. Um, Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Geller? Yes. Mr. Rojas? Yes. Mr. Haley? Mr. Haley? Yes. All right. Tell me yes. Thank you, Mr. Costco, Mr. Dye. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for your uh, time this evening. Uh, and uh, uh, we look forward to uh, getting everything uh, ship shaped for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so item three, we have um, three requests for street acceptance. They're all order uh, fiscal year 2024, numbers 47, 48, 49. They're all the same neighborhood. Um, the Old Field Open Space Subdivision, Timber Lane, Old Field Road, and Urbex Circle Extension. Um, I don't know, is Mr. Is Attorney Castanetti here or Mr. O'Brien who wants to lead off? 
believe he is here, but I think he also let me know that he has a prior arrangement. Um, so that being said, it, this was a referral from town council anyways for street acceptances for uh, the three proper uh, three streets uh, mentioned, uh, Timber Lane, Oldfield Road, Airbag Circle Extension, um, in which through this process we would receive comments from various members of staff, uh, one of which was the water department in terms of some notes uh, based on the street acceptances, uh, based on if they had any issues um, or any issues with uh, boxes or curb boxes. So um, forward along to the board, um, they did note a fair amount of curb boxes bent at a, a fair amount of the sites um, so I provided that as part of our uh, memo to staff, I mean, to uh, board members. Um, I did receive some public comments. I also forwarded along to uh, board members. I know that the town council holds a public meeting. Um, but um, so I did provide a memo to the board um, in terms of some of the deficiencies. Uh, like I said, we're holding some bond money as well for this property. So typically when we're holding bond money, that means that there are things that haven't been requested yet or finalized. Um, so um, so that being said, you know, we're a non-binding recommendation to town council. Town council will take whatever our recommendation is uh, from this meeting and choose what they want to do. Um, town council will also hold a public hearing with notice to abutters for this project. Um, that being said, when we received this uh, notification, uh, it was, I didn't schedule it for the special hearing as well as we didn't have a meeting July 3rd. Um, so any action um, for the board would have to take place today um, as today is the 43rd of the 45th day to uh, provide a response to town council. So, um, that being said, I'm happy to answer any questions or if any board head members have any questions on our end regarding the information that you have, happy to work with you. So Shane, I, I went out there yesterday. Sure. Um, and there's four things that I wrote down. So um, the drainage basins, I mean, I'm, I'm sure Mr. Tansy, before we vote on this, will give us an update. But, as, but it, it appears that the drainage basins need to be mowed or haven't been maintained this year. Um, um, street, uh, street sweeping, there appears to be some puddling in some areas of, of sand. There do appear to be some dead uh, uh, street trees. Actually, um, on the corner of uh, Urbex Circle Extension and um, Timber Lane, that whole property is missing the street trees. And you know, I, 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 this, 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 a, a big piece of open space that was supposed to go to Wildlands Trust, and I emailed Michael Dutton twice the last couple of weeks to find out where we are with the Jenny Leonard open space. I, I never got a response either email. So, you know, I think we need an update with the open space with the Wildlands Trust. We need to get an update from. Michael Dutton on this take how you know as part of this street acceptance. So we just combining that with the you know, just like we take the drainage parcels, we take on a Jenny Leonard parcel that way. Are we handling it another way? Um, trees need to be addressed, sweeping and in, in the drainage basins. And then I know you sent over the water department concerns, and I don't know if Greg has any other concerns, but I, I think there's some outstanding things we need to address before we make a positive recommendation. Mr. Tan, anybody else on the board? I don't know if anybody else went out and looked at it since we got the request. So. Anybody else on the board of questions from Mr. O'Brien or Mr. Tanzi? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, pretty close to me, so I'm, I'm familiar with the area. Uh, I would have to agree with everything Mr. Driscoll said. Um, Mr. O'Brien, in your professional opinion, uh, if you were in our position, would you recommend approving or denying this request at this time? Uh, well, it wouldn't be an approval or denial. It would be a recommendation or not recommendation. Uh, I would say 
anytime we're holding bond money for a property, uh, I wouldn't recommend the street acceptance as well as uh, the condition of the original decision. I mean, I, um, I, I don't, I don't have an issue with the bond money. Everything could be done. They just may not have requested. I just think there's outstanding issues there. Sure. I would just say uh, that more often than not, you wouldn't be holding, uh, a, someone wouldn't be holding, the town wouldn't be holding someone's money unless work has been done. And I, I think a big part of this too, is that open space needs to be resolved, you know, Sure. And I would say there was a condition of the original decision, too, that prior to the street acceptance that uh, a maintenance bond to be determined by the highway superintendent or town engineer for the cost of maintaining detention basins um, be included um, as well, too. So, you know, that's that's a number that I'm not sure how much that would cost in terms of maintenance purpose. So, um, so, right. Uh, I mean, even even though we're holding bond money, I mean, does that bond money... Is there enough in there to even correct all these deficiencies? I mean, anything that's deficient, we should not even. I would say it's it's not a substan. I would say the bond. I would say that the bond money matches the deficiencies. But if there's deficiencies that hasn't even met what the initial approval is for, I, I, how can we recommend to accept this? Well, I mean, typ typically we get a letter from engineering or DPW on this. Greg, did you review this at all yet or not? Well, I did actually about a, a year ago. They did um, quite an, a lot of work on the detention basins, cleaning them up, um, uh, mowing them. They, uh, they there was a lot of um, scarring in the Cape Cod berms that came about from their plowing operations, and they did the work, and they cleaned the de the detention basins. Um, there was, uh, some pavement issues at the, at the community mailbox. Uh, but it, the developer claims that he didn't do that, that that was done by a landscaper. Uh, but, but I guess the question is, have you been back out there to review these issues or have you? No, I haven't, I haven't been able to, I didn't get a chance to go back out there to, uh, look at these issues. I know that there was some tree issues. Um, it's it, primarily that lot at the corner of uh, Timberland and um, Urbeck. Apparently that homeowner didn't want trees planted on their property. So the developer didn't. I don't know if he's obligated to plant the trees, whether the homeowner wants them or not. And that, that was always, that's been an issue that never really got resolved. Well, aren't those trees in the layout typically? I mean, the, yeah. Some Oh, they are. They are. Yeah, they are. So I don't think the homeowner really has a say in it, but. Uh, All right. So. So these, these are decisions that have to be made. And, any, any, any other board questions or comments? I, I guess I would have one regarding the tree, uh, the tree issue. Uh, what would your opinion on that be, Mr. O'Brien? For trees, I would say, well, not to make any homeowners upset, but our goal in our job is uh, town, uh, the town is to make sure that the plan is compliant. It, whether or not once everything's completed, someone decides to take down a tree, then it becomes a different fight. But during the process of development and uh, necessarily an unfinished subdivision, it should be built to the standard that was approved by uh, the town and the planning board. All right. Thank you very much. I I know there are some residents on here as well. Um, is there anybody that wants to speak? Sure, we have a Eileen with her hand raised. Hi, is my speaker on? It is. Yes, just state your name and address for the record, please. Okay, my name's Eileen Baron White. I am a resident, a uh, former HOA trustee, but I am speaking on behalf of the residents. Um, as well as the the current trustees, Missy Shireman and Jonathan Vino. Um, I know you're in receipt, the board is in receipt of a letter that I had sent outlining a lot of the issues that the chair just touched on. Um, so I appreciate that. My only comment tonight, and I appreciate your time, is just I would also hope that you would not recommend at this point that the town council goes ahead with accepting the roads, considering there are so many issues remaining 
that are directly in the subdivision improvement guarantee agreement between Longbilt and the town that have not been addressed. We as homeowners are not asking the town in any way to mediate issues for owners between Longbilt, but only to hold Longbilt to the standards in that agreement. And I appreciate letting me speak um, briefly tonight. I know this wasn't a public thing, but I just wanted you to, to get our side of things. Okay, thank you very much. Attorney, maybe I, I, have you joined us now? I saw you muted, now you're unmuted. Okay. Yes. Is there anything you'd like to add at this point, sir? Yeah, on the trees on the corner, I just on that singular issue, uh, the trees aren't in the right of way. The trees are on the the trees are laid out on the lots because of the width of the uh, right of way. So yeah, it's a it's a dilemma um, when a homeowner uh, tells us that they don't want trees on their lot, and I'm trespassing on his property uh, against their will. So I don't really have an answer for how. On, um, on that on that plan, you, on that plan, isn't there a ten foot planting easement? On the sub on the subdivision plan, typically we if if they're outside the layout, we used to have them do a ten foot planting easement. Is that on the plan or no? I don't uh, know. Not knowledge, uh, but I, I, I'd have to look again. The plan, if you, if you recall, the plan goes back to uh, two thousand and uh, fifteen. No, two thousand five, I believe. Yeah, I guess at that point, Pat, I guess there's a practicality of enforcement, whether it be the developer or the homeowner who the board would take action with. Okay. So trying to cast me while you're on it, what, what's the status of the lodge open space piece and the one that we want the town to take for the Jenny London Park? Can you give us an update on those? I have that that was being undertaken. The, the Jenny Lee Park was being undertaken by you. Um, okay. We've, we've, we've already transferred it to the homeowners association. Uh, what the town decides to do with it, that's entirely up to you. So the, so the, but I thought, I thought the town has first read a refusal on that. Isn't that part of the agreement? As I said, the town, the town can do whatever it like, whatever it would like. The town can, can certainly take it. And I'm sure the homeowners association would be happy to convey it to them, but that's an action that the town has to, has to take. I can't, uh, I can't force the town to. What about what about what, I want it, that they want to take that? What about the um, the other open space of Wildlands Trust? Where is that? Uh, waiting for Wildlands Trust uh, to uh, approve final action. They've agreed. They've already agreed to uh, accept the uh, donation, and um, they move, as I think we all know. Uh, extraordinarily slow, and um, we're just waiting for them to uh, complete their process internally. So, who controls that larger piece of open space now? Uh, that's the homeowners association. And the homeowners association is an agreement between you and the homeowners association. Once that approved, once that approved, they'll turn it over to Wildlands Trust. That's my understanding. Because typically, if we turn it over to an HOA, there should be a conservation restriction on it. But it was our understanding it was going to Wildlands Trust. And that is the goal. But if you don't control it, how do we ensure that the HOA will transfer to the town and to Wildlands Trust? Well, then we just have to discuss that with the trustees to... Uh assure you that that's their intention. I think they all agree uh, from our conversations with them that it's uh, in their best interest um, to complete that conveyance. Yeah, uh, just to step I in, I, the, the, like you said, they, well, one, the conversation, we're trying to primarily focus on the acceptance of the streets. I understand there's uh, some prominent outstanding issues with Oldfield Estates um, Phase 2 that we need to address um but i would say that the decision itself pretty much talks about that um we do hold bond money and 
there are some outstanding issues that we will need to follow up on a town level, as well as uh, me reaching out to Mr. Castanetti. Um, but I would also say there's probably some outlying issues uh, between uh, developer and HOA that still need to be resolved on their end, um, that the town is not totally looking to mediate. Um, so we're just kind of keeping track of this process as it comes and understanding the, uh, the well, problems and the possible solutions. I think, I think other than the issues we identified tonight with engineering and, and whatnot, the, the open space needs to be addressed. I mean, if it's going to remain in the HOA, it needs to have a conservation restriction on it. No, I understand. I'm just saying is that's not, uh, I wouldn't say that's a pertinent reason to reject or accept a street acceptance. You can mention your recommendations, but I wouldn't say that's why we recommend it to. How do, well, if, if we if we release the neighborhood from the planning board, how do we have any control over that chain? Are you talking, what do you, what do you mean? The, the open space is part of the, the, the permit. No, I understand that. I, 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 there is language, I would say, through subdivision agreements as well as other agreements made between the town and the developer that are still actionable um, beyond the decision. And I'm happy to provide it to you, Mr. Chair, um, for that work to be completed, as well as other open space to be followed prominently. Um, but like I said, I'm, I'm focusing solely on the street acceptances tonight. Um, if we want to have a, a more but thorough think, conversation. But, but, but I think the subdivision is not complete until, you know, the the, 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 the open space was supposed to be addressed at a certain building permit. That was never done. Now the yes. it, it just keeps, it just keeps get, get, getting kicked you, down. The road. Well, I can be completely honest with you. There was uh, staff at the time allowed permits to occur, uh, be signed off on past the, I think it was 68th or something. So it came to a point where discovering this information that there wasn't really anything that the on our end we could hold because the amount of permits issued and COs issue were way past that number to hold the applicant I, accountable. I just think while we're still involved, we have to address the issues, that's all. No, I agree. I just say, I would say street acceptance as well. I would say street acceptance in that issue are related but separate. Okay. All right, any other board comments? I see there's a uh, resident comment. Um, I, it's Eileen, could you state your name and address for the record, please? Oh, no, she spoke already. But no. I did speak, but I, I just, I wasn't sure if, I know she, Mr. O'Brien is saying it's two separate issues. I may be able to pro provide a little bit more insight to those open space parcels they were both transferred via a quick claim deed by long built um, on October 21st, 31st of 2023 without any notification to the HOA. So we are now listed as the owners of those spaces. I, as trustee back in 2023, my term was up in 24, um, spoke with Wildlands Trust because we were told initially at the onset of the HOA when we had a meeting with Mr. Castanetti um, to set it up that he was going to transfer that space long before anything, uh, the HOA was formed, that was never done. He, we were then told he was going to uh, transfer that to the Wildlands Trust. I'm talking about the one on the, yep. um, the right. up to Magnolia, the not the Jenny Leonard, the other one. Uh, so after that transfer came through, which we were surprised by, I did reach out to Wildlands. I know at that point they were very open to continuing on with us. He had told me at that time that Mr. Castanetti had told him um, he was working on it and would get back to him. So I said, well, we have a little transfer of uh, trustees in January, so we will meet and discuss it after them, which right now it is just sitting as far as we know, the HOA owns those two parcels. And we are currently insuring those two parcels. I mean, it's extremely frustrating. We talk about this every time this neighbor comes up. I don't know why we can't get some resolution from both the town side and the Jenny Leonard piece and from Attorney Castanetti and Wildlands Trust and the other piece. It's just, it's the same conversation every time we meet. So any anything else from the board? 
Anything else from the public? Do we have a motion or a recommendation to vote on? To recommend or not recommend? So I guess I guess at this time where there's quite a few still deficiencies, I would make a motion to not recommend to accept the streets due to the deficiencies that we're discussing in tonight's meeting until those get rectified. Second. So a motion by Mr. Gallo, second by by Mr. Daly. Daly. Okay. And just for discussion, I mean I'll I'll never vote for street acceptance until the open space stuff is resolved. So that's just where I stand. I apologize, uh, Mr. Driscoll. I was just in the restroom um, while uh, you were talking to Mr. O'Brien about the street acceptance uh, part. Uh, Mr. O'Brien, in your opinion, why is the open space issue not relevant to the street acceptance? Uh, because with a street acceptance, it's making sure that the streets themselves and the infrastructure related to the streets are acceptable for the town to accept, um, whether it be through plowing or pavement. So me it meeting a certain standard, whereas open space itself uh, through this open space development isn't necessarily pertinent to what our scope is for review for street acceptances. And I know we have a motion in a second, but just to continue the discussion, we, we've been through this. I mean, there were four maze done to take infrastructure off the open space parcels to to make it more attractive to wildlands trust and to get it going and everything else. And it's disappointing to hear that without any notification last October, it was transferred to the Homeowners Association. There's no conservation restriction on the parcel. It, it's 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 an ongoing issue. So we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Not yeah, right. Yes, uh, I just have a follow-up question, Mr. O'Brien. Um, if we choose to um, not use street acceptance as a, a tool to uh, get the open space compliance, Mr. Ryan, what would our best follow-up be? Um, huh. uh, well, we, we can talk, we have I, would, I would say that I would probably need to uh, think about that more. Um, I, it's not that it's not something that we haven't discussed internally. Um, I, I mean, the neighbor, the neighborhood has to be complete before we can recommend street acceptance. In my opinion, the neighborhood's not complete. And I, to answer Mike's question, this, we have no leverage once we release the bond and approve the street. No leverage. That's my concern. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? More discussion? I'll take the roll. Mr. Haley? Yes. Ms. Rojas? Yes. Mr. Gala? Yes. McDonald? Yes. And I'm a yes. So motion to not recommend passes. All right, Mr. Chair. I'm going to write up a letter to send over to you um, for review, and then I will be sending it over to um, council. Um, by tomorrow or Friday uh, within that time frame. And then from there, uh, town council will take the recommendation and use it to whatever they seem fit. Okay, thank you very much. All right, now moving on. Um, item four. Um, this is just something we're in a new fiscal year and I don't know if anybody has to be reappointed or was reappointed or needs to be reappointed to the board. Um, but just every year, it's just it's in the it's in the, um, the volunteer handbook that we talk about organization and how the organization set up. You know, chair, vice chair, clerk, et cetera. That Mr. Um, O'Brien noted. Um, do we want to make any changes? Do we? Does anybody want to change their role? Step down? Step up? Status quo? What What do we want to do? I've been thinking about this uh, since the last meeting. I I think we uh, we should consider appointing a clerk. Yeah, I mean, I I have one year left. I don't think I'm gonna. I think in this, I'm 
I have interest in going to another board in the spring in the spring. So I'm willing to serve as chair one more year if you guys want me to. Um but I think we're gonna have to have somebody step up either in April or um next July. So it's but I, I'm happy to do it for another year. I don't know, you know, if anybody if we want to appoint a clerk, so we have a, a third backup if you know, we can keep things the way they are. Just uh, looking for input. That's all. I think that's fine. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'm okay with keeping it the way it is. And if uh, you know, I'll be more than happy to step up as a clerk. Yeah. Why don't Why don't we do that? Because it's it's good to have you back us up, Steve. It, you know, if you want. So, we'll, Mike, you want to stay vice chair? Um, I'm happy to do so. Yes. Okay, and I'll. I'll stay in my role if, if you guys want me to. So, of course. Um, do you want to vote on that, Shane, or just this discussion? Um, I would. God, uh, I'll do it the old-fashioned way where we would have motions and to appoint everyone, just so we have record of it. Can we just do one motion to move things along? We can, if 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 the board members all vote for it. So, um. And I know we didn't hear from Ms. Ms. Rojas or Mr. Haley. Are you guys comfortable where you are? Is there any, would you like to make any changes or what are your thoughts? I'm comfortable with keeping it as is right now. Yeah. You yeah, sorry, you guys froze on, on me. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm good. And if I heard correctly, Steve had said that uh, he would move into the uh, clerk role. I sure. guess I guess in that sense, um, I'm looking at it, I think all we would need to do is appoint Steve as the clerk and then just maintain status quo. Okay, so I'll we'll... make a uh, I'll make a motion to appoint Mr. Geller as a clerk of the planning board. We'll second that. Any discussion, Mr. Geller? That means you have to do all the minutes now. You know that. <laughs> no, it's you, you. I would say. <laughs> it's, well, it's not like that's the night. It's not that's the night. Nobody wanted to be clerk. You want to start reading all the correspondence too? No, I would say that staff would continue to do minutes, and then we would heavily depend on Mr. Geller to uh, um, transcribe our. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Our language. All right. all right. So we have a motion. A second. I'll take the roll. Uh, Mr. Haley. Yes. Ms. Rojas. Yes. Mr. Geller? Yes, with title of VCC. <laughs> Vice, <laughs> Vice Clerk Chair. <laughs> Mr. McDonald? Yes. I'm yes. Okay. All right. Um, item five, we have minutes from the 17th and the uh, April, excuse me, we have minutes from April 17th and May 15th that Mr. O'Brien provided in the packet. Does anybody have any questions on them? Do we want to make a motion to approve? So moved. A motion by Mr. McDonald. Do we have a second? Second. And Mr. Geller, any discussion on the minutes? Any corrections? I'll take the roll. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Geller? Yes. Ms. Rojas? Yes. Mr. Haley? Yes. Yeah. Mr. O'Brien, I'll turn it over to you. you. You drafted some standards for special permits for duplexes. Do you want Yeah, to we just... um. Wanted to have a continuing conversation about um, the special duplex standards. Um, so, what we provided, like I said, we had existing special permit standards that I kind of incorporated into um, for duplexes or for, uh, I guess, minor, these kind of minor special permits that don't go as intensive as some of the other special permits that we have. Um, but we do have an item on an upcoming meeting too that also kind of questions those standards as well. Um, because uh, I guess if we're focusing solely on special permit standards for duplexes, that there's another type of special permit that exists in our zoning ordinance because of the changes uh, for this board to look at as well too. Um, that is a, a project coming before us where it's a change in use um, from a existing building to uh, a, a change in use from a use in an existing building to a different use requiring a special permit. So um, 
looking at that, I, I'm fine with what I presented in terms of for duplexes, but uh, I'm kind of wrapping my head around other standards that we're looking at because based on looking at the project, I completely understand what they provided in terms of plan sets because it it doesn't require anything. They're not changing anything to the site other than interior layout, but we have a certain set of standards that we need to abide by. So um, I guess looking but at it that, from... But, but in that case, we can look at it and you, you mentioned that in that particular case, they have options where they can ask for a fee waiver, correct? And that's something Co we can correct. They, they request, they are requesting an engineering fee waiver, which is something I was going to bring up to the, to the town planner um, report. Um, so that, that would be coming up for that meeting, but I just want to preface it, but yeah, it, it, it doesn't really require any engineering review. It's more just kind of looking at the lay of the law of what our special permit standards are. Um, right. so I, I'm, I'm fine with it, not, not to talk too much, but I think the addition of those standards for special permit for duplexes are fine. Um, but we also look at our, our 10, five standards and kind of, I guess, sort them based on size of project too. Um, because you know uh, those are the those are the stronger standards um, compared to kind of our because they're they're held by the zoning ordinance compared to our own personal standards, which are just held by us. So Shane, are you going to clean those up and get them to us to vote on at a pro like up, 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 upcoming meeting or what? Sure, I can do that. Okay. All right, August seventh meeting. Oh, uh, uh, I'm yep. sorry, Mr. Chair. If I could just go oh, back for a second, okay. uh, Mr. O'Brien, uh, if you had to characterize the biggest changes of the uh, duplexes um, regulation. What what would you what would you characterize that as? The biggest changes from what we've we have, or what we would be creating through it. For, for what we have, to what we'd be creating. Yep. Well, we don't. What we have right now is a very general standard through our zoning ordinance for like environmental impact of project which still would still exist through every special permit review uh traffic and circulation whereas uh, when someone's building a duplex on a singular lot there's not a traffic issue really created you're getting four trips per day that often occur in terms of environmental impact if it's a vacant lot then the environmental impact is very limited and our special permit standards kind of talks about lighting and site layout and it's of course we could review it by that but in terms of review of our having separate standards for duplexes it, it it kind of allows for us to kind of clean it up from like a design standpoint like the conversation we had with a previous project with broad street it was making sure that we ironed out um driveway length as well as drainage issues um as well as uh the septic size too um well, Shane, something. You, yep. you gave two examples. One is a change of use. One's yep. a two-family house. Should we categorize, instead of calling it special standards for duplex, or should it be minus special permit? We could. Um, we, we could categorize minor special permits. Because, because that way you could change this. You could, you know, we've talked about this in the past. When it when it support though uh, the fee went up and stuff like that, but I just think you know down the line we should look at that and maybe call it a minor special permit. Well, even then too, if it doesn't require a review fee, it could be something that we would have. I guess it, being that looking at one of the items that are going to be on the August seventh meeting, it's made me kind of like you said question just having standards for duplexes, but rather standards for special permits that aren't as intense like a change in use or uh, a duplex so you might, um, michael just to answer like this this happened because when we did the zoning rewrite in the table of uses we switched it from book planning board to zba so we both have different processes on how to review a two-family dwelling and it it kind of just lumped it in we I think it's probably an afterthought. It's kind of just lumped it into our general special permit process. Yeah, I would say that prior to this, our special permits were typically uh, of larger projects or um, I'm trying to think of another good example or something that was in an area that really wasn't uh, acceptable. So 
typically everything we'd see would be uh, as of right through site plan review, whereas we wouldn't probably see a lot of special permits unless it were tied to a site plan review. In that case, then we're just utilizing site plan review standards and something similar to our, like our performance standards of uh, larger projects, which have more weight to them than some of the special permit standards. So this but, is really just a modernization or, or an errata of uh, it's the, a, the previous... Uh... A resurrection of older standards to a more modern sense based on the recodification. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Thank and, you very much. I mean, years ago, a duplex in C and D could be built as of right. It didn't need a special permit. Then years ago, it could change to a special permit, but it's through a ZBA process. And they just basically looked at it very high level. And then when we did the zoning recodification, it could switch the planning board, which it probably should be a planning board if you got to look at grading and drainage and stuff like that, if, if that applies. But, you know, yeah, it's just, I, but we need to develop some standards for review. That's all. Yeah, I think the goal is for us to have a set of standards as well as for those who are looking to get special permits to also understand our standards as well, too. So we're all on the same page. So someone would come in and not kind of play a guessing game where we're getting some plans that have some information or some plans that have too much information, just kind of have a level playing field for um, these special permits, whether it be through duplexes or change in uses. Okay. So I'll have something for you guys uh, at the uh, either August 7th meeting or the one after. Let's do the one after. Sure thing. All right. Um... What is on the so August seventh meeting? Just a question for you. I know we have eight fifteen Bedford Street, right? Correct. We have a hearing that I have to recuse myself from. So I just to make sure there's enough people there. And I think I think you have yeah yeah. There's a few it, that as well as I think Winter Street was continued to that one. So I have to recuse myself from two hearings. And 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 the, we got a referral from the council. Not yet. Is that correct? From um, the fifty five plus. Correct. Uh, I would have I have to email Deb. We like I said, council was last night, so I got um, I know it was referred to us, but it's scheduling um, a meeting and see if the CD committee was available probably for that August seventh date. Can we do it the second meeting? And that was could we do it the second meeting in August? Um, I, I I'll, I'll I'm gonna reach out to Deb first um, yep. to see when the CD committee is available. I know what our Availability is on the seventh and the twenty first. So, uh, if, we, if we can go to the twenty first, I think the twenty first will be better. All right. Oh, but I'll give I'll get back to you and keep you posted on that. Um, but we have a uh, couple special permits, another subdivision, um, as one well other, as one other, another subdivision outside of Winter Street. We had a we a couple months ago we had a preliminary subdivision for uh, three fifty Cross Street. Um, that's coming to us through the definitive subdivision process. Um, that's on for well, August as well. Yeah, and then uh, three special permits. And 815 Bedford Street. Correct. <laughs> Two continued yeah. items, uh, a new subdivision, and then uh, three special permits. Okay, I'll I'll talk to you about the um, the lineup because, like I said, there's two or three things that I have to recuse myself from on that seventh. So. Does anybody plan on being absent at this point from the seventh? Just so if we have a special permit or something, we can handle that. I should be there. Should or shouldn't? Should should. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, did you kind of handle your planners report already, or do you want to? Yeah, just that uh, it'll be something that will be voted on for that special permit process. But we did receive a a waiver request from the engineering review fee for uh, a special permit and a change in use, uh, not to provide any recommendations, but I, I, I feel like it's an acceptable request. There's not a change in uh, conditions of the site itself. It's really an interior change. Um, so I would find that to be an acceptable request, um, but that'd be something we would vote on uh, in terms of the application itself. Okay, thank you, Tim. Uh, but other than that, nothing really going on in town. Let me, um, speaking of Winter Street and that subdivision, just timing wise, Greg, where are we with Winter Street? Is are the plans done yet? Uh, the, the Winter Street uh, improvement plan, the, the pavement and all that stuff for Winter Street. Yeah, it's, it's about 95% um, done. Yeah, we have to, um, 
uh, put together a, a, a bid package for it. Um, but what's what's happening now is Flag Street is going out for an emergency repair on the on the drainage, and we have to get Flag Street safe for travel before we can take the truck um, out, route off of Winter Street. So we have to we have to do the improvements on Flag Street first before we can open up um winter street uh or or open up before we can um start working on on winter street but i guess i guess my the reason i asked is if if you start work before we have a final approval or before the plans are signed off on this new subdivision on winter street i can't sit in on it but i'm sure you'll coordinate with that developer to to do a stub before you pave, correct? I mean, that's on, that neighborhood's on your radar as far as right. Yeah, um, what what they can do is they they can um, you know they can stub off all their utilities. They can bring their utilities in, um, and the way that subdivision is designed is so that the intersection um, is tying into the proposed new location of, of winter street so but i guess but i guess mr o'brien so we're all on the same page so i just don't want to get to a point where we pave that street and then the board approves the plan and then it can't tie in for two years we're all on the same page like it's it's on dpw's radar that that neighborhood is going in and if you get to the point of bidding it you'll make sure they tie those utilities in even if we don't have an approval in case there's a, a future approval correct Right. They'll what they'll have to do is pave that spur as you know per the proposed plan. And that way when the subdivision finally, you know, gets approved, they just take it from the property line on in with the road. All right. I, I just want to make sure it's on the radar, that's all. It is. It's factored in. All right. Uh, we're, we're just right now we're doing a little bit of a juggling act between Winter and Flag Street. All right. Anything else from the board? No. Anything else from staff? No. Uh, we got some emails, I think. Well, I guess this is. For you, Pat, uh, CPC, I guess they're working on a five-year plan. Right. And then, yeah, we, we just, we have a hearing coming up. So I'll keep you guys in the loop on that. I, when, I'm, I'll have to find out when the first, I think the first hearing's coming up in a couple of weeks. So I'll, I'll, I can send an email to you, Shane, with that date if people want to participate. Yeah, because I know uh, J.M. Golson reached out to us for some questions regarding uh um, 40B information. So we're working with them on that just to keep you in the loop um, to help with that uh, five-year plan. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Working on uh, working okay. with the uh, Open Space Committee uh, I'll be on their meeting for tomorrow um, okay. because the town's going to look to uh, looking for, I'm going to look to do a grant for uh, monies for an open space and rec plan update. Um, so That'll be something that'll be submitted, and I'll keep you in the loop how that goes. All right, um, and then can we put 900 Elm Street on the next agenda for discussion? I'll talk to you about it later. For the 900 Elm Street for okay, just for discussion. Sure, we'll throw it under. We'll throw it in discussion. Absolutely, uh, Mr. Brian, if that grant was uh, granted, um, where would you put the open space parcel? It's a, uh, oh, I apologize, Michael. It's not an open space per se, it's the plan. So for us to be subject to state grants for parks and open space, we have to have an active seven year uh, open space and recreation plan. So the last time we did our plan was in 2018. And surprisingly, seven years from then is going to be 2025. Um, so I'm just trying to get on it now um, because the amount of time it would take for consultants, public hearings, public meetings, uh, and just the entire process, uh, April 2025 will happen sooner than later. 
Um, so I'm just making sure that we don't have a plan that's expired. Um, so gotcha. we maintain eligibility for such exciting open space parcels like we're, we're doing with Styles and Heart, which uh, requires um, state money to uh, do. Thank you. All right, do we have a motion to adjourn? Nobody has anything else? So we'll move. And Mr. Geller, do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Mr. McDonald, we'll take the roll. Ms. Rojas? Yes. Mr. Haley? Yes. McDonald? Yes. BCC Geller? Yes. <laughs> and I'm a yes. <laughs> Thank you.